I am called a cynic because I speak the truth in front of your eyes, says the infamous cynic philosopher Diogenes. When thinking about the cynic, the first image that comes to mind is that of the non-caring wanderer living on the fringes of society, detached from its norms and conventions. The cynic embodies a radical departure from the accustomed paths of existence, unlike other philosophical schools that may retain some semblance of connection to societal structures or pursue intellectual pursuits within established frameworks, the cynic stands starkly apart. Their rejection of societal norms isn't just a mere disagreement, it's a fundamental renunciation, a deliberate embrace of shamelessness and defiance. The cynical way of life does not only differ greatly from that of non-philosophers, but even from other philosophical schools. Other philosophers in ancient times distinguished themselves to some extent from their fellow citizens, for example because they dedicated their lives to scientific research, like in Aristotelian philosophy, Aristotle being a contemporary of the infamous cynic Diogenes, or because they led a modest and withdrawn life like the Epicureans. The break of the cynic with the world can be called radical to say the least. He rejects what others see as elementary rules, as necessary conditions for living in society. For example, cleanliness, clothing or politeness. The cynic is deliberately shameless. He does not care about social conventions or public opinion, scorns money and does not hesitate to beg. Above all, they seek no security, but live as Diogenes himself put it, Deprived of home, city and fatherland, a beggar, a wanderer, with only enough bread for one day. His begging bag contains no more than the bare essentials to survive. He is not afraid of the powerful and says very provocatively whatever comes to his mind. The critical question that I want to reflect about is whether the cynical philosopher's way of life can be regarded as a viable approach to navigating the complexities of our modern existence offering potential salvation from the myriad challenges that confront us today. To find an answer to this question, we must first examine the nature of philosophy in antiquity, as we need to ask ourselves what cynicism represents. Cynicism was not really a school, at least not like the other schools of philosophy that existed during this period. Cynics like Diogenes and Crates did not teach in the classical sense of the word, although they may have engaged in some literary activity, particularly poetry. Yet, they somewhat form a philosophical school, to the extent that there is a teacher-disciple relationship among the various cynics. And throughout antiquity, cynicism was always regarded as a philosophy, but not an ordinary philosophy. Cynic philosophy is purely a lifestyle choice, a choice for freedom, complete independence, which they called autarkeia from useless needs such as luxury and vanity, which they call tufos. This choice clearly implies a certain view of life, which we also see emerging today, for example in movements like minimalism or in self-help books. These modern expressions of freedom from excess baggage and the pursuit of inner contentment find their origins in many philosophies and religions, and there is no denying that they take a lot of inspiration from cynic philosophy. The cynic is in search of his own type of life, because he thinks that the natural state, as we find in the animal kingdom for example, is better than the conventions of society. There goes a famous example of Diogenes refusing to use cutlery when he sees a child using their hands to eat and drink instead. Whether it is better to live life according to nature or convention was a popular topic among the ancients, and for the cynics it was their number one priority. But this does not mean that their way of life came without criticism. Plato called Diogenes Socrates gone mad. Whether it be true or not doesn't matter, but it does offer us some thought-provoking material for reflection. In a certain sense, Socrates was a precursor to the cynics, as he was also often made fun of because of his outward appearance. More so, we can compare the figure of Socrates in Plato's Symposium with the figure of Diogenes as a homeless beggar, a heroic symbol for the otherworldly philosopher, a different type of Socrates, that, just like him, saw it as his duty to make people think and reflect. And perhaps there is wisdom in the cynic's rebellion. In a world increasingly dominated by artificiality and superficiality, the call to return to our natural state resonates deeply. 
to strip away the layers of societal conditioning and reconnect with our primal instincts. After all, in the rawness of nature we may find a purity of existence that we don't find in modern civilization. But the call from the cynic to return to our natural instinct goes beyond a mere critique of society. A cynic like Diogenes was certainly a critic of the society of his time. But if we take a closer look at his philosophy in his surviving fragments, we can actually read that he is trying to give his view of what a right society would actually look like. For one, there would be no shame or fear of judgment, as everyone would be able to speak their mind and opinion without being judged. As I explained earlier, Plato called Diogenes the mad version of Socrates, but personally, I think this is a bit of an oversimplification, and Plato probably meant it as a way to insult Diogenes. I see Diogenes as more of an anti-Socrates. While Socrates was actually known to get into heated conversations by using his infamous Socratic questioning, he was still actively trying to make his dialogue partner reflect and was always a well-mannered philosopher. Diogenes, on the other hand, had no issue with blatantly insulting his opponent. Just think of the way how he asks Alexander the Great to move away because he stands in his sunlight, when Alexander asks him what he could offer the poor cynic. As from Alexander's point of view, Diogenes was a poor beggar in need of a favor. But from Diogenes' point of view, he was not in need of help and neither did he consider himself poor, as being poor is a societal construct that he did not agree with, just as he did not agree with many other of society's constructs. Daring to question the status quo is in my opinion something very underrated in our modern society, and we often get scolded if we try to do so by the masses. The presence of contrarians like Diogenes serves as a vital disruptor. Figures like the cynics force us to confront our entrenched beliefs and see beyond our own perspectives. Without such provocateurs, we risk becoming prisoners of our own ideologies, unable to see the world with clarity. Diogenes, in his unconventional and confrontational manner, reminds us of the importance of questioning and of disagreeing. And in a greater sense, this is one of the many ways in which I believe philosophy can be a tool for life. How many people do you know who criticize others without changing their own behavior? It is easy to criticize modern society from our comfortable bed and fancy house, or complain about other people. This was one reason why Diogenes wasn't a big fan of Plato. Plato criticized the government while socializing with the dictator of Syracuse, making him earn Diogenes' label of a philosophical hypocrite. Diogenes, in contrast, lived his philosophy by devaluing material possessions, residing on the streets and treating all people equally, disregarding social status, even at personal risk. He saw wisdom in the ways of dogs, embracing their behaviors as he urinated on the streets of Athens. Diogenes embodied his philosophy, earning begrudging respect from some and the scorn of others. Does that mean we need to defecate on the streets? I surely wouldn't recommend it, but reflecting on Diogenes and cynic philosophy in general makes us ponder. Do we authentically adhere to our professed principles or only when convenient? Are we genuinely aligned with our religious or philosophical beliefs or just in name? If our actions contradict our claims, Diogenes would indict us for hypocrisy. Our philosophies must mirror our deeds, otherwise our pursuit of wisdom is but empty rhetoric. Did you like this video? Be sure to check out the video on Epicureanism made by my fellow dude or my earlier video on Epictetus and Stoic philosophy. Want to see more content in which we explore philosophy? Hit that like and subscribe button and be sure to leave a comment. Thanks for watching, take care and we will see you in the next video.